Hey everybody, it's Pigeen. Welcome to Piggy. Being powerful, being you, being all of you so you could lead, sell, grow, and absolutely kick your own butt to make a difference in this world. I am thrilled and excited because you're about to meet an amazing woman. Her name is Julianne Sullivan. And a few seconds, you're gonna get to hear her because we're gonna be talking about business culture and employee engagement. For those of you that are running your businesses, who are leaders in your organization, Julianne has such inf great information to help you increase your employee engagement, ensure that people have high morale, ensure that they're productive. So stick with us when we go to Julianne Sullivan and employee engagement, business culture. This is what I sing when I'm walking down the street. I've got the power, she's got the power, we've got the power, yes. Be feisty, be focused, be fearless, have fun. Begging, power, begging, power. So Julianne Sullivan is called a business culture expert. She, let me share with you some information. Are you looking to retain good talent and increase productivity, problem solving, profitability? Or you should. <laughs> Julianne Sullivan has done the research and will show you how. This is important because she's really done extensive research on employee engagement and business culture development. Julianne's diverse background gives her a unique perspective. She earned a BA in psychology and an MBA in accounting. She's also earned the designation of CPA, so she knows the money and she knows people. Julianne is a business culture expert, a professional member of the National Speakers Association, a C-suite network advisor. She hosts two podcasts which stream around the world. Her podcasts are amazing. Her newest book is titled Blueprint for Employee Engagement. 37 Essential Elements to Influence, Innovate, and Inspire. Welcome, Julie. Hey there, Pagain. So, Julie. Wow, that, I'm blushing over here. That's a lot. Well, you know, it's just because you started when you were seven. And, <laughs> yeah, you know, it, I it's like that. that has gone on. You know, that's all it is. That's right. So, I, I have to ask you a question because... There's a lot of information about employee engagement, and there's a lot of information out there. People, there, there is talk about it. The problem that I'm seeing is a lot of times, you know, we also see a lot of statistics of the lack of employee engagement, the sense that people aren't feeling connected to either the organization or the work. Can you talk about why then is employee so engagement so uh, important and how to get over that that bump? Yeah. yeah. Well, it's interesting because you use a word that's very important and that is connection. And I don't care what generation you're talking about. People like to feel connected. And, you know, they used to say, oh, you got to have a work-life balance, which really doesn't exist, right? Our work goes home with us, our home comes to work with us. So this connectedness with a workplace where we're spending a third of our day at least, um, and our brain power is probably going into that a little more, is really important because it should feel, well, I don't want to use the word should, but it's great if it feels like another family, right? I'm leaving my family at home and now I'm going to another family where I'm working. You know, or, or that, or that I'm leaving my family, my dysfunctional Woo! family at home. I'm going to the family. I'm going to my Woo! family that really works. At work. That's a possibility too. But you know, I have this philosophy that people, everyone, just wants two things: they want to be acknowledged and they want to be valued. And all the work I do in business culture really just surrounds around that. People want to be connected to the purpose of the company they're working for. I think it's important that companies understand that it's someone's purpose at work is not what they do every day. It's bigger than that. So for instance, um, I read this story about a company once 
where a man had a bracelet on. It was an ID bracelet because he used to go and bike by himself. So it was a, a bracelet that had his phone numbers on it. Well, to make a long story short, he goes to take a bike ride and he has a heart attack and falls in his neighborhood. Somebody comes over to help him. They call an ambulance. They also call his wife because the number's on his bracelet. The man did end up passing away, but she got to spend the last two minutes of his life with them because of that bracelet. She wrote the company a letter, and then the company gathered everyone together to let them know this is why they do the work they do. An engraver just doesn't engrave the information. They're giving someone an opportunity to spend the last two minutes with their loved one. So that's that greater purpose that's really important. The story that you said was really, really powerful. I, I think that sometimes in for entrepreneurs and certainly with large global businesses or large businesses, a team loses... First, if it's a small business, the, the designer, the creator of the business knows the purpose, but sometimes doesn't know how to communicate that to their team so it's their purpose too, right? Absolutely. That, that there's almost that separation of this is why I'm doing it, but it may not be relevant to you, so I'm not, even, not even They may not even understand that that's important. See, that's, that's a key. They don't even think about, wow, maybe everyone who works here should know what my greater good is. They, they don't even have that thought process. So that's a really important piece that, it, that I want you to just flush out a little bit for us. How does a leader recognize for themselves that this is important? I mean, partly is uh, this conversation that we're having right now to hopefully illuminate to those watching that you need to take a step back and start being aware. And hire of, a culture expert like myself. <laughs> hire a culture expert like yourself, for sure. And to just start to be aware. So, so can you just give me a couple of questions that maybe somebody watching, aside from how do I find Julianne Sullivan? Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, I, but that I, can say, you know, what are some questions that they should be asking themselves to assess whether or not they aren't communicating the, the higher purpose. Right, and even knowing that. So the first thing I would say is all leaders should be asking themselves, what have I done today to expand my knowledge? And that can be in any area. Um, you know, companies who don't know employee engagement is important at this point for me, are people who are living in some kind of bubble. It's not a secret anymore, and it's going to become really important as our workforce shrinks because the places who do have it will have the talent and the places who don't won't. Um, so first of all, I think the first question is, is what have I done today to expand my knowledge? And that can be in almost anything. And then the other thing is, the other question, key question, I think, goes back to communication, which is my favorite subject, and that is, am I listening to the people that I'm working with? Because they will tell you what it is they need to know. And if they're stepping back, and so, so let me, let me go back to that bracelet man, right? Um, which I love that story because the CEO, the first, the wife took the initiative to write that company that created the bracelet. Exactly. Right? And, and that, that one letter then connected the CEO to the purpose, which he might himself have gotten caught up in the numbers gotten caught up in the sales, gotten caught up in the, how are we promoting, how are we marketing? And that letter had to have touched his heart in a certain way that he then communicated to the rest of the, the company. When you say, what have I done today to expand my knowledge? Are you also, is that, is that also meaning 
what have I done today to touch me being the leader CEO, to touch my heart to what I'm doing? Well, I think it that comes with expanding your knowledge. Because when I said expanding your knowledge, I wasn't specific on a purpose. So it might be expanding my knowledge in how my business is run. It may be expanding my knowledge on what the outside world is talking about in my particular industry or business generally. It might be expanding my knowledge of the people I work with. So, so that's why I kind of left it broad. Okay. So, so let me just move on to your book, right? And I, I just want to share a screen so people can see the cover of your book while you talk a little bit about it. How does this, so the Blueprint for Employee Engagement, 37 Essential Elements to Influence, Innovate, and Inspire Others. Yay. So in the Blueprint for Employee Engagement, tell me again, tell me some tips that are coming from that for that leader, for that CEO. Expand on it for me. Sure. The real reason that I wrote the book was employee engagement, which now, by the way, is morphing into the employee experience, too big of an idea, and they don't really know how to get started. This book is geared towards, here's 37 ways in which you can get started, because you could actually... Um, spend a month or two on each of these uh, chapters. So give me a title of one of the chapters and a a tip from the book. Okay. Uh, Well, the first one is authenticity. That's not the first one in the book, but that's the first one I'll talk about is authenticity. And in the chapter, one of the things I say is, uh, Authenticity, the quality of authenticity is essential in great leaders. People who work in an environment where someone is a leader, that leader can't say something and do something else. People are smart and people, our workforce is getting smarter all the time. If you're not authentic, if you are not true to your own personality and spirit and character. People know that. If they think that's untrue, then they begin to think other things are untrue. So what happens when we're talking about the authentic world, right? The authentic authenticity. And we certainly have had and are having um, experiences and I think because of reality TV and some of the changes of people who are authentic who are actually leading businesses and may not be the most pot their authenticity is negative uh, is not in the most positive way because I want to be able to be really clear about it. I'm hearing about this a lot in organizations where people are saying, you know, because I talk about, you know, being you, be your authentic self. And so they're bringing this, this persona that they have maybe covered up. Um, and this persona is actually causing more damage than in, in engagement, right? How do we help, how do you help leaders who will say, uh, this is who I am. I am, I am who I am, who Popeye. I am. Popeye. And like, kind of like Popeye. And, and yet, um, there's people that are leaving the company and organizations. There are, uh, productivity is maybe perceived as high, but it's really not as high as it can be. You know, the, the, the. That's very familiar in companies. Some companies are you know, especially in um, private companies, they make this level of money and it pays for all their vacations and their toys and they don't really care that they can make more or be more efficient or have less stress. That, that ha- that's very common. It's surprising, but it's common. And so when we talk about authenticity, 
I'm, I'm assuming that it's, especially when we're talking about employee engagement, we're talking about authenticity of a positive, uplifting, um, passion focused, enthusiastic. Actually, I'm hoping, let me put it, let me change what I'm saying. I'm <laughs> hoping you're talking about that. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, of course I am. But the other thing too is honestly, even if, you know, when people are authentic and, and then you know what you're dealing with, okay? Um, I could be a leader who doesn't want a lot of detail. I'm a bottom line type of person, which is who I am anyway. You may come to me and love to give me detail and I may not want it. And I may tell you, I don't really care. Just give me the bottom line. But that's who I am, Okay. If I fake it and say, and listen to everything you have to say, which doesn't have meaning for me, unless you can show me why it has meaning, then I'm going to be drifting off somewhere. I'm not really going to be connecting. So a part of authenticity is accepting people for who they are, as long as you're still reaching the goal that you all have. That also means... That, can, can you hear me okay right now? Yes. Yes. So that also means, if I'm hearing you correctly, is that we want to make sure that we as a leader are sharing our authenticity to our staff, our people, the people that, our constituents, that this is what gives me, this is what makes me giddy, this is what turns me off. I, I, I like going to the bottom line. I may not be with you. If you're going to give me a lot of stuff, you may see me drift off. Here's the best way for you to respond to me right? or to, or to, to reach me so that when I'm drifting, drifting off, you're going to kind of go back and say, all right, short, sweet, to the point, got it. Let me talk to you that from that perspective. Right. But also there's a respect that comes in that goes the other way. So if you, if I say to you, Pagin, I'm going to give you some details now. I know you're not really a detail-oriented person, but there is a reason I want to show these to you. So stay with me, right? So what happens is if everybody's authentic and another chapter, you have respect for one another, then you learn how to communicate another chapter with each other better. And... So when we're talking about, you know, the people that are watching this are mostly uh, entrepreneurs. Some that we have some leaders. We, we definitely have leaders watching from a wide variety of uh, areas, and we also have what I would call managers. So these are people usually working for a large organization, very large organization. They are definitely not in the C-suite. They're not even in the director level, but they themselves are managing teams. How do, and, and one of the challenges sometimes is authors like you write about the leaders being in charge of the, the culture, the business culture, the employee engagement. There's all these, you've been in HR, there's, there's all these rules that sometimes can uh, make a manager feel that they don't have the power to change culture within their, or their own area. Can you talk to them, give them some insight maybe to show them how they have the ability, the power, the responsibility to lead within their own area of expertise? Because honestly, this book was not just written for leaders. It's for everyone. I think everyone can is a leader at some point i don't care where you are on the spectrum and in a company you're a leader to somebody you know when the copy machine breaks and nobody wants to dig in and fix it and find out where that piece of paper is stuck somebody does they're the leader um when you get a new software somebody's a leader who knows more because they're more techie they took more time to figure it out so everybody's a leader and i think it's important we'll stick to authenticity that everybody be authentic so managers who feel like oh i've got all these rules i can't do what i want to do i think they can still be a role model 
and emulate the behavior they're looking for from the people who work for them. And let me give you an example. There may be a CEO who's a son of a bee, okay? Let's just assume that's happening. It's very difficult to work, but people like the company overall and they want to stay there. So as a manager, you can emulate the behavior of how can we do this dance, keep the CEO off our back, and still get done and feel good about what we're doing. Okay, so that's a way to still be authentic and deal with the pressures from above, let's say. And, and keep the loyalty of... Uh, and, and integrity of not being able to not sharing like okay we know he's that way but in my in our right. shop in our area in our place, right. department right department this is this is why we do what we do this is what we're going to stay focused on this Absolutely. is why we're a team about it and bring it up you know one of the things that I, it, it's been bantered and shared for so many so many years. I don't even know where the first person was that said it, you know, that, that people leave managers, not companies. Oh, and it's so true. I mean, I, I get articles about that all the time on my Google alert and employee engagement. It's the number one reason people leave their jobs. And it's twofold. Not only is it, I don't like to work for Sherry or Sam, because they're just not a nice person. They never recognize any good that we do. But people who stay for whatever their reason is and see someone else leave and wish it would be them also don't work as hard and smart and clever for a bad leader either. Right? right, because they don't feel that connection. We're going to come back to that connection. Uh, they don't feel connected to that person, so they're not willing to put in extra time or focus more or come up with new ideas because they feel like it's a dead end. Or that they and, and the other piece that certainly has been one of my experiences in talking to people and certainly reflecting around my own career and this is a career advice to people that are working particularly with a manager that they don't really like and they happen to be in a large organization. One of the gifts that you have so you don't lose the investment of your seniority, your time, your your company pension and all that is that you can always you don't have to leave the company. You can leave the manager and ask for a, a different place. If you go to HR and say, I need to get out, you're either going to lose me or find me another position. Right. You're, and use your network to say, I'm, I'm ready to move on. Do you have a place for me? I see too many people, and I have been victim of it, where I left the organization, never, never even dawned, dawned in my mind to go ask for, uh, to be put in another another division or another place or another move or a transfer. Some Save me. You right. know, not only save me, but hey, I'm good at what I do. You don't want to lose me. And so those of you that are watching and listening to Julie Sullivan, who is an expert on business culture and employee engagement, who also has been, um, is a uh, former, well, a C CPA, She's a BA in psychology. She's written books. She has two fabulous podcasts that uh, one is called uh, Mere Mortals, correct, Julianne? Mere Mortals Unite. And the second one is called Businesses Where, That Care. Businesses That Care. So I just want to make sure that people know that you can reach out and listen to Julie's interviews and to her information. So the first one is Mere, M E R E mortalsunite.com just look below you see the link just check her out there and then the second is the businesses that care podcast.com the businesses that care podcast.com again check below there's the link uh, if you're watching it on youtube you can go to the link that's in youtube but if you are watching this right now you're on facebook look up youtube look down <laughs> uh and if you are just wherever here it is right there below for you 
She's also the author of Blueprint for Employee Engagement, 37 Essentials, Elements to Influence, Innovate, and Inspire. And you can go to her website at Julie, J-U-L-I-E-N, Sullivan.com again. Check right over here. I'm placing it right here. <laughs> so you now can reach out to Julian and get some of the information and the insights that she brings to the table. Julian, I'm going to thank you for what you're, what you're sharing, but I want to go back and to ask you, you have three key points that I love that you had said. So here I am. I'm a CEO. I'm a leader of my company. I've got some team members. I'm a business manager. I have my team of people. I want to do great and employee engagement. I'm a leader. What are some three key points that I need to walk away with from you right now? Short, sweet, to the point. Okay. Uh, communicate better, and that means listening. That is is the key to everything else. You absolutely have to listen more and communicate better. This, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> um, the second um, idea I would have is to constantly be open to new ideas and be open to those new ideas from the people who do the work that you're managing. Because a lot of times when we manage things, when we're leaders, we're not into the nitty gritty. And you really need to listen to those people who are actually using that new software or actually selling that new product to get their feedback. You can't keep them out of the loop. And number three, just be to keep growing and expanding. That is just so important. It sounds obvious, but how many people actually make time on their calendar to do that every day? Julian, I adore you. Thank you. I have been a fan of your work, love your podcasts, and I'm really honored that you are willing to be on my show, come back to the show, play with me again. <laughs> And, and I just wanted to uh, tell everybody, this is a lady that has a huge heart, great mind, and big soul. Thank you. Thank you all for being with me. This is Pegeen. Welcome and goodbye from Pegeen TV. Love you all. Mwah! This is what I sing when I'm walking down the street. I've got the power. She's got the power. We've got the power. Yes. Be feisty, be focused, be fearless, have fun.